Hello again, my name is Enrique Hasso and the Associate Director of the Texas Health Education Service. Uh, I've been with you with all the courage sessions uh, since we started those back in April. And I'm excited to bring this topic to you all. The virtual interviews are something that's kind of new uh, for this type of world. And as we're approaching the interview season, uh, it's, it's becoming really apparent that there have been some changes that aren't really being communicated very well. So in this presentation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over some of the resources that exist out there uh, and then go over some of the things that you could expect on your typical interview day. So just digging right into it, uh, for your interview day, typically what would happen is that you would go to the campus and there would be a full day of presentations. The admissions director would come out and talk to you about the school and the different elements of the admissions process. The deans would come out and talk about how amazing the school is, share some of the achievements that have been made by the institution, maybe even share some uh, great stats that might educate you on the culture of that particular institution. Uh, and then of course you would go into your interviews, which would either be one of two options, uh, an actual one, uh, two or more interviews uh, that you would go into the typical setting, or you would go into the MMI, which is the multiple mini interview. And in those scenarios, you would actually go in and uh, go through different sections uh, or stations and answer questions that are predetermined by uh, that particular institution in regards to what they're seeking in their students. Now, I'm not going to dig into how to prepare for interviews or how to prepare for MMIs because there are plenty of amazing resources available out there for you all. Uh, and if you do have some resources that you'd like to share, please do share them uh, on here. Uh, and so what we're going to dig into today is the difference for this year is that now we have these virtual interviews. Now for the virtual interviews, these are going to be either live presentations uh, given by the same folks that you expect on a typical day of your interview day, or they might actually be pre-recorded uh, and available to you on demand so you can watch them beforehand. Uh, so that's a little bit of a shift from what the typical scenario would be. Now, for your interviews, those might actually be either synchronous where you actually have somebody on the other end asking you questions and you're answering them kind of live, or they may be asynchronous, where you are actually answering a script and recording your responses. And we'll get into those in a bit, uh, particularly for medical school applicants. Uh, this is a new tool that's been developed this year, and we'll dig into that in a bit. So previously, your interview day, you know, you would hear from advisors, your interview day starts the moment that you step foot on campus. Uh, you know, there are greeters at the front door, there are uh, current students who are welcoming you, staff members who hand you your little badge and give you your schedule for the day, uh, the folks that are ushering you into the, the big room where you would actually hear presentations, you, uh, the interviewers that are actually asking you the questions, the deans that are giving presentations are paying attention to see who's actually engaged with the presentation. Uh, anybody that you encounter at the school would essentially be able to provide feedback on what you've been doing that day. Uh, and I've been around for, uh, I believe, 11 years now. Uh, and it's been pretty telling the, when somebody is really engaged and wants to go to that school versus somebody who is not really paying attention. I've heard stories of people who fall asleep during the dean's presentations. You know, that doesn't reflect well on, on those students. So remember that your interview day starts from the moment that you step foot on that campus to the moment that you leave. How is that different for virtual interviews is that it begins from the moment that you log on all the way to the moment that you log off. Uh, and so throughout the day, you know, you're going to be taking different breaks. Remember that there are folks in there who may have feedback or may be able to provide feedback on what you've discussed. And if these are part of a larger pattern, that could be a potential area that could adversely affect you. Uh, so make sure that you are, I hate to say this, we're all adults, but you, that you're on your best behavior. Uh, and then you recognize that the interview is an opportunity for the schools to get to know who you are and how well you're able to fit their mission statement. Uh, so some questions that you want to ask yourself uh, as, you're, as you're going to the interview day is what kind of behavior 
do you want to show? You know, you're reflect, everything is being reflected uh, of your application, all your preparation, the letters of evaluation that you've asked for, your advisor, all of these people who have been supporting you are now being reflected in your behavior at the interview day. So make sure that you really project the type of applicant and the seriousness of the situation. Uh, how engaged are you with the process? Are you actually paying attention during the sessions? Are you taking notes? Are you able to ask intelligent questions afterward? It's really about being uh, you know, active in listening to what's going on. Uh, you know, everything has been distilled uh, from the live day, you know, some of the live interview days, I've actually heard some might take a, a few days, you know, uh, and now a lot of these are being distilled into a, a, either a full day or half day of interviews, uh, because, you know, virtual tours might actually take a little bit less time. Uh, and so everything that's being shared with you as in, on the interview day is actually something that's going to be real important for you to listen to. Uh, and then, of course, how excited and how eager are you to be there? By the time that you get to the interview day, you've already met all of the academic requirements. The schools know which courses you've taken. They know your activities. They know that you would be able to handle the rigors of professional school. So what is it that you're bringing to the table that really shows that you're excited and eager to be there? Now, uh, probably don't want to be too giddy or too excitable for being there, but you definitely want to show the excitement and the uh, anticipation that you've been facing in going to the interview day. Uh, so of course, it's going to be a lot of your visuals, uh, your, your body language, are you smiling? Are you engaged with the camera? Like for example, right now, I'm just looking at a plain camera at the top of my screen. Uh, but that really shows that I'm here and I'd like to be a, a part of this conversation. Uh, and so it's the little things like that. Now, some of the things that we've discussed with the admissions committees, of course, there are so many concerns about biases, uh, particularly around, you know, uh, you're, you're being, um, the admissions committees are coming into your home. They may be coming into uh, specific parts that they may not have been privy to previously. And so the admissions committees have shared that they are educating their admission staff to not be, uh, to not cast any um, negativity or remarks on the living situation for students. Uh, unexpected interruptions from family or roommates. Now you probably want to tell your roommates not to do the latest TikTok dance in the background uh, for this particular instance. Um, or, or family, you know, uh, I, I definitely know what it's like to have a, a big family and uh, having interruptions. And so you want to be careful with that and, and just make sure that they know that you're going into an interview day with a professional school. They likely already know that you're going through the application process. Uh, and it's just one day or, or a couple of days that you may have to interview. Uh, and so it shouldn't be too difficult to uh, set that expectation. Also, technical issues, uh, the schools will not fault you for those. They are bound to happen and there are contingencies in, plan, in, in place to help address any technical issues that may happen during the interview day. Uh, and finally, any issues related to your health or your unique circumstances. We're living in a really uncertain world right now and uh, you know if, if there are any specific issues that may interfere with your ability to do your interviews, please keep in touch with the admissions, uh, the uh, admissions coordinator uh, and make sure that they're aware of those and they may be able to have some way of uh, working with your schedule to either reschedule you or to uh, uh, you know accommodate you in any way. Now, I do want to give a quick disclaimer that this is not my original, uh, these are not my original ideas. There are some that I've been taking from uh, resources that are available from the AMC, and I'm going to share those on my screen now. Uh, and these resources are really helpful because they are actually a part of uh, what the AMC does, and it's to help educate students on the overall process. And of course, Every one of our uh, allopathic schools is part of the AAMC, and they actually are part of a larger network of schools throughout the country. And so they actually have quite some clout. And so part of what I'm sharing with you here is going to be part of this uh, prep for success in your virtual interview presentation that Dr. Frazier, Dr. Dunleavy uh, gave to the AAMC. 
and this is available to you. And I'm sharing the link here in our presentation so that you can follow along as well. So uh, some things that I want you all to kind of take away from this. What is a virtual interview? Uh, again, it's going to be something that's either going to be live or asynchronous and on demand. Uh, and, you know, ultimately what it comes down to is the preparation that goes into it. If you're going into a live scenario, you know that you're, you know what to expect and you know that there's somebody gonna, uh, that's going to be there interacting with you live. When it's asynchronous, you may have the opportunity to uh, prepare a little bit more. For example, the Vita, uh, which we'll talk about in a bit, actually allows you to uh, do individual questions asynchronous, which means that you'd be able to do one of the six questions in one day and then do the, the rest on another day or just do all six in one sitting. Uh, another thing that you need to consider is the type of technology that you need. Uh, and this is something that, uh, for those of you that have pre-health advisors, they would be really key to help you uh, with figuring out that te the technology that you need. So figure out of the school actually has a tutorial for their virtual interviews. There are a ton of different platforms that are out there right now. Some schools may actually use Zoom to do the virtual interviews. Other schools may use that Vita system that I'll talk about in a bit. Uh, other schools may actually have their own independent platforms that they've developed. Uh, and so it's figure out what that system is and make sure that it runs well on your computer, that you're able to connect uh, your and create your profile, make sure that your name is visible. Do a practice run uh, and see if there's any anything that you can do to set it up ahead of time. Uh, and make sure that as you're setting everything up, that you know who might be available for tech support, either on the uh, professional school's end or on your school's end, uh, just in case something does go wrong. Uh, and with technology, I could tell you uh, stuff goes wrong quite often. Uh, think about where you will actually do your virtual interview. You want a quiet and private space. On campus, you might actually find a library or a, a specific room that the pre-health advisors have uh, booked in anticipation for virtual interviews. Or if you are uh, attending classes remotely, you might actually find that a local library is available or a community center. Uh, in the absolute worst case scenario, you know, you could also do these in your car. And again, the schools are no not to, uh, you know, make any judgments based off of your location. And so in the worst case scenario, you know, your car is a, a quiet space that you, that you could be in. I do ask that you be careful and judicious in Texas. You know, right now it is still summer. So if you are in your car, just make sure that you uh, take care of yourself and you use common sense uh, in doing that. But, you know, in the best case scenario, it's, it's a nice quiet space that, you know, you won't be interrupted in. And please don't do this while you're driving. Um, you, want, you want to make sure that you have no distractions around. Uh, another thing for you to consider is you want to make sure your space is well lit. For example, here I have a light that actually uh, shines a light on my face because if I had it off, you would only see the back light uh, and it makes it difficult to see my, my, uh, my face, my, my visual expressions. Uh, you want to make sure that you're in a well-lit space and if possible, make sure that your light is coming from the same direction as your camera so that it lights up your face as well. Uh, and then make sure, of course, that you have access to stable internet access and, of course, power. If you're doing this on a laptop, you want to make sure that you have access to that power outlets uh, just in case your know, power goes out uh, with your battery. So overall, the process, the way that this works is that um, you want to make sure that you keep up with communications coming from the schools. Don't forget to check your spam or your junk inboxes. Uh, far too many times I've heard of students who uh, had actually had some sort of correspondence from the school, but it was stuck in their jam in their uh, spam or junk inboxes. So please pay attention to those. If you receive any emails from those particular from any school, make sure that you add them to your safe senders lists. Uh, and I think it's safe to call out that the the email uh, services that are typically they have a really really strong uh, junk email filter is probably going to be like Hotmail or MSN. Uh, those are the big ones. But of course, you know, if you have a Gmail account, if your school has a specific 
inbox account, those settings might actually be set pretty strictly where emails from the schools may be getting sent to your junk or your spam inbox. So please pay attention to those. Uh, the types of questions you'll be getting during the process, during the interviews, are either going to be behavioral, which is where they ask that you describe different experiences that you've had. Uh, uh, so, for example, it's something that you've listed in your application. Uh, uh, another one would be situational, which is like, what would you do in this scenario? And then finally, it would be uh, general questions like describe yourself, describe what you have come through. Uh, and it's just to kind of get to know you. So all of the questions will either fall into one of those three scenarios. That oversimplifies it, but it, I, I thought it'd be interesting for you all to know. Uh, make sure that when you go into your interview day, you know your application in and out, back and forth, every which way. For the TMDSAS application, you're able to download a copy of the PDF that the schools actually get by going and logging into your application and then going to uh, entry year 2021, and it's a hyperlink that will actually take you to that PDF. Uh, so download that PDF and make sure that you know everything that's on your application. Uh, for some of you, your application may have been you know, a few months ago or maybe a few weeks ago. Uh, and so you want to make sure that you have everything that you need uh, so that you can compare notes and you are ready to answer any questions that might come up about your application. Uh, remember that it's fair game. Everything that you've entered in the application is fair game during the interview process. So if there's a, uh, an interviewer who's more interested in asking you general questions about yourself, they may ask you questions about your experiences. They may ask you questions about why you've discussed something in your optional essay or why you gave a certain response. And remember that the core competencies are going to come into play here. Uh, and so you wanna use examples from your application to kind of align with certain core competencies and make that line clearer. Uh, and don't forget that the school's mission and vision statements are going to be key here. Uh, once you get to the interview day, they are, again, uh, the schools have already seen that you're academically capable of handling the rigors of, that, of their school. For the interview day, they're trying to see if you are a good mission fit for their school. Are you somebody who's going to carry their mission and their value statements? Uh, and we've talked about this. Uh, we have a whole episode of the podcast dedicated to the mission and vision statements for each one of the member institutions. Uh, but really go out and do your homework because these statements are really what drives the overall admissions uh, and all of the theory that goes into the admissions process for each one of the schools. So the, the better you connect yourself and your application to that mission vision statement, the better, the easier it is for your interviewer to be able to make that clear distinction as well and kind of defend you in the admissions committee. Uh, when you are asked about specific scenarios, I do want to uh, emphasize a, a great model, which is the STAR model. It's a situation or task, action, and results. And so for situation and task, it's what was the issue. For your action, it's what did you do to address the issue. And for results, uh, obviously it's asking what were the results. So let's go into a, a kind of a, a test scenario here. So I know for a lot of you, this has been quite the summer where you had so many activities that were lined up. And all of a sudden, when COVID hit, all of these activities, unfortunately, were canceled or postponed. So in that event, a situation would be COVID-19 has seriously impacted your summer activities, which included, let's say, shadowing, for, uh, shadowing a doctor full time or a dentist full time in July. So what action do you did you have available? Uh, you were going to find opportunities to supplement these canceled activities. Uh, you ask yourself, can I sew? Can I make masks for my community? Uh, can you help deliver food for Meals on Wheels or for local food banks? Can you help tutor students virtually? We've discussed uh, dif different activities like this. Uh, in terms of getting shadowing experience, does your primary care physician or your veterinarian or your dentist offer uh, telemedicine that you might be able to shadow through on that platform? This is something that's relatively new for Texas. Uh, and it offers some really unique opportunities. Uh, and then asking yourself, uh, how can I be engaged in the changing landscape of healthcare? 
Uh, healthcare uh, right now, compared to what it was like in February or even early March, is drastically different. Are you keeping up with best practices that the school that the uh, different uh, healthcare environments are going through? Uh, have you been exploring how uh, geriatric care has changed? Have you explored how pediatric care has changed? There are so many different changes that have taken place. Are you keeping up with all of that? Uh, and also, are you keeping up with the debates about the future of healthcare? There have been so many changes, and of course, right now we're in the midst of a presidential election and some larger elections that are going on. So the question is, you know, are you keeping up with the different philosophies and how those might affect healthcare? Uh, and again, you don't want to come at it from a political perspective. We all have the right to our own perspectives, but you want to come at it from the perspective of a future prospective healthcare provider. What does it mean for you? What does it mean for your future patients? Uh, and are you able to communicate your thoughts clearly uh, as, a, as an aspiring professional in this area? And so your results, the part of all of that is that you can now say, you know, for example, despite the pandemic that canceled some of my stellar planned activities, I refocused my attention to help my community in ways by organizing blank, 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 by organizing food drives, by organizing, uh, tutoring sessions for local students or whatever it is that you ended up doing. And so that shows that in the face of, you know, unprecedented, uh, you know, circumstances with all of the changes that have been going on, you are still engaged with the process and we're still engaged with helping your community. And that speaks volumes to who you're going to be as a healthcare professional. Uh, and in regards to your shadowing, you know, even though my shadowing experience was canceled due to COVID-19, I stayed engaged by learning more about the profession through dot, 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 whatever it is that you ended up doing. And so using that STAR model where we have the situation, action, and results is really going to be key in you being able to discuss what's happened, what, what you did to address it, and what resulted of it. So that's something that's really important for you all to remember as you're going into your interviews. Uh, another document that I found with AMC, and I will share it now here, is the virtual interviews tips for medical school applicants. Uh, and again, uh, I recognize that these are all medical school related, allopathic school related, but these are largely uh, representative of some of the changes that are going on with both our dental and medical applicants and also our osteopathic applicants. Uh, and so here we have, you know, uh, going a bit further into depth with live interviews, asynchronous interviews, the behavioral general situational questions that we were talking about, your different experiences, how to practice with the technology that's available, uh, setting up your technology and your environment for the interviews. And so here what you want to make sure is that uh, you have your lighting right, that you look good, that you sound good, that you make sure that you start the session without being on mute like I just did. Uh, that you're, you know, fully engaged and are able to present yourself in the best way possible. Uh, for uh, virtual backgrounds, I, I know that you all noticed that I have a virtual background up here. Uh, I do want to point out that we did reach out to a few schools. There was a concern that if you are using uh, perhaps a virtual background with your school's logo, uh, whether that would be an issue. And I do want to share that during interviews, uh, some schools will actually do what's called a blind interview, meaning that the admissions committee does not know specific parts or any of your application. Uh, and so what that means is that the schools are really doing uh, a unique job in removing any biases that may be associated with uh, knowing who, what, you, what you put in your application uh, compared to what they'll see on the interview day. So in those scenarios, if a school has blinded the admissions committee to your application, the admissions committee might not know which school you've attended. Uh, and then say you show up and your virtual background is, and I'm sorry, Aggies, but let's say it's a Longhorn, it's burnt orange, and you show up to another school's uh, interview with a super burnt orange background. Uh, and that might actually not be such a great idea. And I'm gonna give you two reasons why. Uh, the first one is uh, it's gonna be something that could be distracting to the interview. 
Uh, particularly, I've seen some backgrounds where it looks like you're about to give a press conference because your your team just won the the March Madness, and it's just super distracting and it takes away the attention from what you are trying to accomplish. And then two, uh, it could potentially open some biases on behalf of the admissions committees. Um, you know, are you uh, talking about how difficult it is for you as a Longhorn to attend Texas Tech or to attend Texas A&M? Uh, and having that background might actually reinforce that idea. And so you wanna be very, very careful and very judicious with your backgrounds and make sure that they're not distracting. Now, as a uh, as we release this recording, we will actually be writing an article that'll be released soon that'll include a few uh, virtual backgrounds that are completely clear of any logos. They'll be in different colors so that you can match it or contrast it to your outfit. Uh, and hopefully they might help you in the event where you can do a, a virtual background. Now, not every platform is gonna have the ability for you to put in a virtual background. So uh, make sure that you keep your background as free from distractions as possible. Have it be a clean room with nothing distracting. Uh, if you end up having to use you know, a China cabinet or something like that in your background, don't fret too much about it. Uh, ultimately, what you wanna make sure is that it's not a distracting background. You want to be the focus of the attention, especially when these interviews may not always be as, as long as you'd expect. Uh, make sure that you dress professionally, just as if you were, you were going to the professional school uh, in person, and that you're well rested and focused on it. Uh, make sure you have your coffee if, if that's something that you do. Have a good full night's rest the night before and, and be ready to be fully engaged because that's, that's going to be a, a really big point. Uh, another great tool that the uh, AMC has shared and has actually developed in these past few months is the Vita, which is uh, a virtual interview tool for admissions. Uh, and what this is, is a tool that offers the admissions committees at different schools to integrate some of the core competencies into their admissions selection. And what happens is that the, the Vita program will actually have uh, six questions that they'll ask you. And you go in, you log on, there are six questions that are a combination of their personal experiences, your behavior, your situation, and it's a one-time online unidirectional interview, meaning that it's only you engaging in the interview. You get a text prompt and you are able to record yourself in a video or audio response. There's no human interviewer on the other end. Um, of course, once they review your recording, there will be somebody there, but as you're recording, there is not. You have one minute to reflect and read the question, and then three minutes to record your response. So these can be pretty quick. You know, In five minutes, you've already gone through a question. The cool thing about these is that you're able to record one question or all six in one session, as long as it's all completed by the deadline that the school gives you. So if you have any more questions about what the AAMC Vita tool looks like, uh, here we are sharing a link on our discussion. Uh, and of course, if you're listening to this on the podcast or watching it in the uh, on our YouTube channel, we will share all of these links in the description of this episode. Uh, so now that we've kind of gone through all of the different tools, everything that you should do to prepare, all of the different things that you need to cover, uh, I do want to share some great tips that were given to us by uh, Caleb Marsh, who is the Associate Director of uh, the Temple, Post uh, Temple University Post uh, Back Program. Uh, and Mr. Marsh is actually one of the members of the Texas Health Education Service Advisory Council. He wrote this awesome article. Uh, way back in uh, in May, where he shared some of the uh, best practices and tips about what you should do to prepare for virtual interviews. This was way back when some of the schools didn't even know that they were going to do virtual interviews. Uh, and so some of the points are reiterated here that we've shared, um, you know, dress as if you're going to the interview in person, make sure that you turn your phone off so you have zero interruptions. 
Uh, something that's great on here, if you go by your preferred name, make sure that you change your screen name so that it's your preferred name. Uh, and also make sure that your preferred name was included in your application so that the school is aware and is able to connect you back to uh, your application. Uh, don't use distracting backgrounds. If you're not talking, make sure that you are muted. And if you do for any reason have to take a quick break or the restroom, whatever, and you have to turn off your camera, make sure that you upload a profile photo so that when the camera stops, your photo appears. And that just kind of shows that you, uh, it's, it's a little added step. Nothing major, but I think it's the little things that really count here. Uh, and so we've got some great tools here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marsh, for sharing these. Uh, I think that that'll be really helpful for a lot of students out there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have been in communication with all of our member institutions about the virtual interviews. Uh, this is something that's brand new. And uh, we presented some questions that we wanted to make sure that they were aware of and had scenarios uh, or uh, contingencies in place to help address. And again, in case of emergency, meaning that uh, your internet was cut out, your power went out, anything happens during your interview day that could jeopardize your ability to engage, make sure that you contact the school's interview coordinator immediately. Uh, be professional and courteous in your, in your communication uh, and know that the schools anticipate that there will be issues that arise and will work with students on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, I, I hate that I have to say this, but please be judicious in uh, reaching out to the schools in this manner. Obviously, they're doing everything that they can to make sure that this is an equitable uh, way to uh, deliver virtual interviews. So uh, if, you know, just make sure that you're not abusing the system. There are, there are safeguards in place, but the last thing that we need right now is, is abuse of that, uh, of that flexibility. So if you do have any issues that happen, don't hesitate to reach out and communicate with them. If they don't know what's going on on your end, they're not able to help. So keep that in mind. So I have thrown so many different things at you all right now in a very short amount of time. There's so much more reading that you all have to do with all these links that we've shared. But I did want to leave you with one final thought here. Uh, the interview day is actually your opportunity for shining through, uh, giving everything that you've got. The schools already know that you can handle professional school academically because they've seen your application. They know how you compare. They know that you show that you're able to just jump right into the curriculum. That's not the issue anymore. At this point, they wanna see if you're a good mission fit. So make sure that you do your homework. Research the school, research what it is that they're looking for. Talk to people who may have already gone to that school. Uh, do everything in your power to know what it is that that school can give you and what it is that you can provide the school. Just as much as the schools are looking for somebody that matches who uh, fits their, their uh, ideal candidate, you're also looking for which school fits what it is that you're looking for. Take a look at some of the current sessions that we've recorded over the summer and see if there are any questions that you'd like to ask them in follow-ups uh, or if there are any questions that you'd like to follow up with current students on. Um, secondly, think about how you can align your experiences with the school's mission wherever you can. Now, you don't wanna do the job of the admissions committee for you, uh, for them, but you do wanna make sure that you make it abundantly clear that you've done your homework and that you've aligned your application to what it is that they want. And lastly, and absolutely the most important takeaway from this whole presentation is for you to be yourself. Uh, again, you're looking at a school where you're gonna be spending at least four years. Uh, you're gonna be moving to this community. You're gonna be engaged in this community. Is it a good fit for you? Be yourself and see if you see how reflect on how you feel. Take good notes about everything that you've encountered, everything that you've engaged, everybody that you've engaged with, uh, and really, you know, don't put undue stress on yourself. The interviews are to see uh, whether you're a good fit for the school, and also for the schools to see if they're a good fit for you. 
Don't forget that if you're a Texas resident and a medical applicant, you will participate in the, in the TMDSAS match uh, coming in March. Uh, and part of the TMDSAS match is going to ask you to go back through all of the places where you've interviewed and rank them. So having clear notes about your interview days is really going to be helpful as you reflect on each one of the interview days and everything that you've learned and whether or not the schools are a good match. Uh, and so that'll help you be able to build your preference list a lot easier. So do your homework, align your experiences with the school's mission, and be yourself. And that is absolutely the best thing that you could do is to be yourself. So uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, I really want to thank you all for uh, watching today and on behalf of TMDSAS, the Texas Health Education Service, and all of our participating institutions, we'd like to wish all of our applicants all the best of luck. If you have any questions, we are available to you on the TMDSAS Hub Facebook group and also in the TMDSAS Pre-Help, I'm sorry, uh, Non-Traditional Students Facebook group. Uh, and we're there to help with any questions that you have. So thank you all so much and we'll talk to you later.